Hello everyone, this is Shamsi and welcome to the Mining Guide. This video will cover how I mine millions of litres of Tier 1 ore and in the process good amounts of Tier 2 and Tier 3 ore here on Alioth and will not be focusing on the, the minutia and the, the practical details of how to actually mine because I feel that's been covered at great length already and I'll be linking to a couple of excellent guides that teach you the basics of mining and uh, also if you find this video useful or helpful please do consider liking it or uh, also subscribing to this channel it uh, really does help a lot so uh, let's get straight into it my wife introduced me to a new uh, term called t-channel and there are apparently channels on YouTube dedicated to the appreciation of tea, and that's not tea that you drink. Uh, spilling the tea apparently means engaging in gossip and drama. And I may be wrong about this, but I expect at least a little bit of uh, drama uh, to ensue from the making of this video, and that's to do with these things here, these territory scanners. Uh, there were a couple of things that struck me as odd when I first started playing the game. The first uh, was that everyone I talked to, now the people I talked to were very open and generous with their experience in the game, uh, but everyone I talked to who knew what they were doing was rushing these things, territory scanners. And one player was even lamenting the fact that they moved as quickly as was humanly possible, but it took 27 hours for the actual craft to finish. So they were one of the first people in the game with a territory scanner, and they were lamenting the 27-hour craft time that these things were taking. And I thought, well, that's strange, because the use of a territory scanner, to my mind, was simply to help you find good deposits of Tier 2 and Tier 3 ore, and especially early on, that didn't seem all that vital. And I was wrong about that, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And the second thing that struck me as odd uh, was when I first started publishing uh, guides on industry for YouTube and the flowcharts that I make, I was focusing on territory scanners as a guide, as an example of what you can use your industry to create in an automatic uh, system. And I got a few very interesting comments there, people basically suggesting that it was harmful to my financial health in the game, and by extension also theirs, if I popularized knowledge of how to make these things in the wider community. And that struck me as odd for a multitude of reasons, but one of them was everyone I knew was making these anyway, so that's why I used them as an example. I, however, didn't realize that super nodes are everywhere you look basically here on Alioth or at least they were when when I was looking and so the reason uh, people were uh, suggesting that I shouldn't popularize how to um, make these uh, territory scanners is because it would mean more people would be able to use them to compete for finding super nodes now every ore that we mine in the game anywhere on the solar system is permanently gone and on Alioth, as you can see, there are only a certain number of tiles available. And there are a lot of players in this game. So, the more people with territory scanners hunting supernodes, the less supernodes are there to be found uh, for everyone else. But this game, to my mind, is all about inclusivity. And the air show that um, Zenith Corporation Virtual had put on recently was a, a pay into that for me. It was intimidating. Such beautiful, such enormous ships are functional and well made. And instead of letting that overwhelm me, I simply let that inspire me. And so I'm, I'm experimenting with voxels here, making cones and, and cylinders, trying to figure out how to, how to use it all. And the same is true for me with the economy of the game. It's all about inclusivity and bringing as many people along as we can into uh, the lifeblood of the game. Mining is the lifeblood of this game. It's how resources enter the economy. And to my mind, the more people who can buy into the economy of the game, to engage with and take part in the economy, to have wealth, the better. Because that means there's more ore available to buy for people who are buying it, and the more people who are able to afford to have ships to go up into space and PvP with and have blown up and to, to have fun with. 
it's better for the health of the game when more people are able to have a stake in it and the economy in it. And so trying to not share knowledge of how territory scanners are actively used, to my mind, is wrong. We are in a unique period of time in the game where atmospheric PvP isn't in the game yet. So even if I go to Ion, and uh, on different planets there are you know more super nodes and more higher tier ore nodes around than say on on Alioth. and so even if i'm in ion i can safely scan away to my heart's content and no one can shoot me so this is a very unique time in the health of the game to be able to in, sorry in the life of the game to be able to generate wealth safely and the more people that can do that yes the more competition there is for for super notes here on alioth for instance but also the better the long-term health and life of the game so uh, bear in mind you know, passive mining is coming. If I have these two tiles claimed, I can set down a, a robot that will slowly draw the half a million liters of all tier one out of the ground for me over time. There's asteroid mining coming. The way the game is right now isn't the way it's going to be forever. Yes, there will be a scarcity of resources at some point, but for now, even a few days ago, one of my Twitch subscribers found um, a super node, a two million liter tier one super node, 30 kilometers from one of the main districts here on Alioth. Another Twitch subscriber found um, a three and a half a million liter chromite node on another planet. And uh, you know, that's 180-ish, 200 million quantum, all right there if it can be transported back to Alioth safely. So um, the scarcity of mining resources isn't going to be here forever. And while we all have the opportunity to mine safely, I think it's best to give as many people as possible a chance to, to be a part of that to, and to engage with that. So to do that, I'm going to talk through how, uh, for the first part of this video, how I mine my millions of ore. Now, I remember uh, what it was like to go out and mine, you know, 30 kiloliters of each tier one type and bring it back. And I get comments on my industry guide videos telling me, Shamsi, how on earth do you keep your industry fed? How do you get enough ore out the ground to, to keep your, your uh, processes running? And the answer is I mine super nodes. And so as you can see, I keep a few hundred thousand, over 500,000 at any one time of each tier one uh, ore, and I mine them by the millions. I sell a bunch, I keep a bunch, I use a bunch. And here is how I do it. The first step is to get three territory scanners. The difficult part here used to be in finding them to buy. And that's why people who were making them early were selling them at such extraordinarily high prices. But at this point in the life cycle of the game, there are still super nodes to be found, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but a territory scanner is now incredibly cheap. So these are on Ion. Okay, District 1 Marketplace, there's one for 1,750,000. Uh, marketplace 13, there's one for 1.9 million. You can get one for roughly 2 million quanta. And that isn't a lot of money in the end. Because if you mine tier 1 ore, just iron, coal, even silicon and, um, sorry, quartz and uh, bauxite, they sell. They sell on the main districts where large organizations are based on, so buying them in bulk. Uh, let's go for uh, hematite as an example. Uh, if I sort by price... These prices are in very small quantities in, in strange places. So there's 2,000 on Marketplace 16 for 1450. Uh, but if I go down here to the first large ish quantity, yeah. So on Marketplace 18, uh, there is, oh, there's only 759. Let's go down a little more. So, yeah, 24. At this point in time, People who like to buy ore in bulk like to buy it in bulk. They don't generally like to, at least I don't generally like to go down and buy 4,800 here, buy 220 there. They want to buy like 100,000 at a time. So if you've taken 100,000 liters of ore uh, to, one, say, District 7 on Alioth, with the market the way I'm looking at, it, looking at it right now, I would put it up for 22 or 23 quanta uh, per unit, and it will sell. And for every... Uh, I think about 90,000 hematite that I put up, that's another territory scanner. So I would mine normally 
and have a, a small hauling shuttle like this to take the the ore to market and uh, I would buy enough um, so sell enough to be able to buy my territory scanners now when you have the territory scanner now this is the important bit you need to manage expectations I'll use my own locality as an example because I've already scanned everything and taken what I wanted from it but for instance, when I was scanning down here, I would go along in a row, then down and along in a row, and down along, and, you know, for over two days, I scanned most of this area and didn't find any supernodes. There was one small one, I think, there-ish. Uh, but when I was scanning up here, uh, I found a whole bunch. In one day, I found five supernodes here and three supernodes here in these mountains now these are becoming more and more populated this is a, a large organization I think taking gland here but um, in my local area I found a whole bunch of supernodes now all you need to do is to go somewhere where it's slightly less populated and start scanning now you might get unlucky or it might be that myself and my my twitch uh, subscribers and viewers who I talk to and stream about this stuff have all gotten incredibly lucky but it's not a sample size of just one I know of multiple people who uh, as solo players are able to to go out and mine um, millions of liters of ore because before they go out mining they bring their scanners out and start scanning uh, the area and uh, looking for supernodes so what do I mean by a supernode uh, let's get a graphic up right so as you can see each node, as far as I can tell anywhere in the uh, solar system, <clears throat> has about, I'd say about 350,000 to about 550,000 um, liters of tier 1 ore. But if you find anything above, say, a million liters of ore of any one type, that tells you that at least one node in that tile has a few hundred thousand kiloliters of ore. Uh, of that ore type in it and generally if it's over about 1.5 uh, million liters so 1500 kiloliters I think that's a good enough tile for me to either start mining in or to claim so how does all this work uh, there are multiple ways of doing this you can uh, make a, a blueprint of a dynamic construct uh, that you can pop down with three scanners on each corner you can put scanners in the cargo hold of your ship and then when you've parked where you want to park go into build mode and then plonk them in the correct uh, corners or you could build a ship like this except i'm sure you'll do a much better job of it than this uneven asymmetrical thing that i've just thrown together quickly uh, but what this has is three territory scanners in the extreme corners of a small dynamic core and what I'm able to do with that uh, is uh, quite simple, uh, really. I go to a tile that I want to scan. And by that, I mean the intersection of three tiles that I want to scan. So let's say I want to sit in that corner there in front of me. If you look at my minimap, you'll see there's uh, three tiles intersecting there. And I fine-tune my movements by having my uh, air brakes on and my uh, engines thrusting. And then I basically uh, keep going forward until... Um, now you can land and use the maneuver tool in many ways. It's, it's easier to do that. But I basically make it so that I have one territory scanner in each of these two tiles. And then the, the front territory scanner in uh, the open V... Uh, of the other tile and then I hit land so as you can see I have one territory scanner in this tile one territory territory scanner in this tile and one in this tile now when you do land on a ship like this uh, there can be micro little movements so what I normally still do is select the ship with the maneuver tool and then unselect it to lock it in place because a territory scanner stops working if it's moved and sometimes there's a, sometimes those tiny tiny movements are enough to stop the scanner working and, and that's not good so <clears throat> get out uh, having maneuvered it into the intersection of three tiles and turn on the the scanner or just land it close by and then use the the maneuver tool to to get everything to where you want it to be and then you start scanning 
And when you do that, you're going to get a whole bunch of this stuff. Just a whole bunch of random tiles. You know, some Akinthite here and there. Some tier 2. Oh, this was actually a super node. Uh, I didn't notice it. Eh, I don't want it. It's 20 days old. It's probably gone by now. And, um, yeah, so a whole bunch of this stuff. And here you see elevated levels of hematite, but it's not enough to warrant the time it would take to, to find that for me. And every now and again, though, you'll find... Uh, do I have a super node uh, here? Yeah. You'll find uh, something like this. Uh, this is a super node area that I was uh, mining. And as you can see, it has um, a coal node. That It actually turned out that the, the coal node... Uh, was just uh, about a third of it was in this tile so it was an enormous coal node and I've mined out the adjacent tiles and I only have you know about the million kiloliters left in that node in in the tiles that I claim left and it's got nearly two two million liters of hematite hematite in it as well and when you do that when you found um, a node you have two options the first is to do I have one uh, here oh it's the, the wrong container the first option is to pop down a territory claim unit so you claim the tile but that does get really expensive the more tiles you claim and your second option is to mine it there and then uh, when you do that do bear in mind if someone sees you mining with you know a bunch of containers they can guess that it's a super node that you're mining and I have heard of people plonking down claim units on top of other people while they're mining. So, you know, do be careful. But uh, you have the option of claiming the tile and then mining it at leisure, at whatever rate you feel like mining it at. And you also have the option of mining it quickly there and then. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is you might say go through three or so... Um, quartz super nodes before you find your f first coal super node and to that i say when you found your first super node your hands are kind of untied when it comes to the commerce of the game you are now able to start buying into the market and so what you can do is say if you have uh, you know four million liters of quartz but you want you know half a million liters of everything you can start putting your quartz up on the market um, uh, at a slightly elevated price and then start playing the market so putting in buy orders for the uh, the hematite the bauxite and the coal at you know slightly lower prices and trying to sell your quartz at slightly higher prices and trying to you know play the markets in that way and so again it doesn't really matter too much what the super node it is that you find uh, because you can sell and buy and then also it doesn't really matter too much if you can't find good amounts of tier 2 and tier 3 because you're finding millions of liters of tier 1 and then you can sell those and then use that money to buy whatever it is that you're missing. So it really does help you to buy into the, the health of the game. But uh, let's say that you found a uh, tile with a super node on it and you want to, um, to build on it. Now again, I do hasten to add here that I think I've gotten pretty lucky, but also a few of my Twitch viewers who are solo players playing on one account who go out and scan and then mine, um, uh, they've also been finding super nodes uh, quite often. I have also had a couple of viewers who say don't have three super nodes, uh, say three territory scanners yet, uh, who scanned say 20 tiles and haven't found anything yet. Um, if I go out scanning, a good day for me is scanning anywhere up to say about 64 tiles. So it's, it's a lot of time spent. But when I factor in the time spent finding the, the super node, the time spent finding the actual super node inside the tile and then the time spent mining out the super node i still get a lot more ore per hour when i go for super nodes rather than when i go for um, regular mining the regular mining is still a completely viable and uh, a good way of getting say more modest amounts of um, of ore but let's say you found a super node and you want to mine it uh, the first thing you would do is if you don't want to claim the unit, um, you would just do this straight away and start mining. Or if you want to uh, put down a territory claim unit on it and then come back, when you're ready to mine, the first thing you do is put down a small dynamic construct. Let's uh, call it, uh, you know, coal horde or whatever. And then uh, get 10 container larges and then put down a container hub and link all 10 to the container hub. Right, now when that's done, 
um, I have some uh, talents affecting this. If I go to my inventory management, I have container proficiency to level four. That doesn't take long to train at all. And what that means with 10 large containers, I can mine up to 1,792,000 liters of ore at a time. And then you declare this as your linked container. And the other talent, although I'm jumping ahead here, that's uh, important here, is um, uh, primary link augmentation for your container. It's important to have four points here to get an extra 1,000 uh, meters of, of range on your linked container. And also advanced augmentation. I have this to level four, though this takes a bit longer, which increases max range by 10%. And when you have that kind of uh, investment in talents, you can go up to 1.75 kilometers away uh, from your uh, container that you link to and still be able to mine straight into it so you put one of these down and then you start looking for the ore when you're looking for the ore uh, you need to it's important to bear in mind that um, a super node is is generally very large so it it often spans more than one tile has you know nooks and crannies here and there so uh, the first thing you do when you find a tile with um, a super node in it so I would scan all the adjacent tiles and if I see um, say 2 million liters here 1 million liter here and 700,000 liters there of say hematite I know that the super node spans these three or at least one of the super nodes in here spans these three tiles so I can limit my search to here but if you don't have that advantage you would just dig down from the middle and start searching as per normal uh, my average, because uh, as I said, a super node is huge. If it's only contained to this tile, it can you know be roughly you know this sort of shape here, over say a quarter of the tile. So the um, average for me for finding a, a super node organically in in a in a tile without any kind of indication of where it could be from the adjacent tiles, is about 150, about 120 ish, 150 ish thousand uh, liters. So remember the tile normally has say half a million liters of the tier one uh, in it uh, anyway and then so the super node say in this tile is probably about 2.3 million liters of quartz and in this tile about 1.4 million liters of hematite so subtract subtract the half a million away from uh, the figure here and so um you know it is the a huge part of the tile so you are very likely to find it it can sometimes take a few hours to find the the, the node inside the tile but be patient and and you'll get there so um you found that you've scanned the tile you found um a super node you've scanned the tiles around it you haven't found any elevated levels in the adjacent tiles you dig your shafts down you start mining out that one resource looking for the super node and then when you see something along the lines of this so this flat sheer surface as you see now sometimes ores do spread around in tendrils here and there, but this flat surface here is a good indicator that you found one of the outside limbs of the of the super node, and so you just follow it in, or you get lucky and you you come upon the central core of the super node. And to give you some indication of size, uh, I'm going to cut to another clip here. Uh, so this is that uh, coal node I was talking about earlier. Uh, I mined half a million liters out of this massive cavern that you're seeing here. And I mined about 250 kiloliters out from uh, the adjacent tile. And that's still roughly a million liters left in the, the tile that I have claimed uh, that I'll, I'll, I'll get to at some point. Um, so I have one million reserve in, in my claim territory and I mined out the, the others. This is the sort of scale you're looking at. On a good day, if I'm in a good flow, if I'm mining efficiently, I can get up to about, up to, I've been up to half a million liters of ore mined per hour while mining a super load. Or, you know, the lower stand for me is around 300,000 uh, liters of ore per hour. So when you go through the time spent scanning, and with three scanners, it, uh, if you get lucky, it won't take that long, though it's important to manage your expectations. You could get unlucky and start scanning uh, territory someone else has already scanned or scanning territory with a few super nodes in it. 
But uh, eventually you will find one, even here on Alioth, at the time of recording of this video at least. As I said, I am finding them, my subscribers on, on Twitch that I speak to are finding them. Random people that come in to, to, to our Twitch uh, chat are finding them. Uh, people in my guild, DRGN, seem to take great delight in sharing the details of their super node discoveries. And remember, you're not limited to Alioth, especially if you want to start putting down claim units and having reserves. Uh, I have um, a, a coal super node on Thades that I'm not touching. Um, if you have warp drives, you can um, go off to, to other planets. Or if, uh, if you want to take risks, you can take something like this. A heavy hauler uh, with um, enough carry capacity uh, to be able to, to bring back... Uh, oh, I need to replace the, the containers here uh, since I leveled up my, my container ability. But this is 10 containers, so with, uh, with when I reapply, uh, when I replace the, the containers, it can take the same amount as the, those 10 containers that we, we put down there. And even hematite, this can probably probably lift uh let's let's have a look at my uh oh this isn't my pilot character but nee, suppose you're on a character like mine without any piloting skills uh, this ship without with zero piloting skills can lift about i would say about two and a half kilotons of weight so um you know if you can haul from one planet to another massive amounts of tier one ore uh then you can start uh scanning and mining in interplanetary mining ops uh for yourself um so uh, that's it. If you want to ask me, Shamsi, how do you keep your industry fed? The answer is, I only mine super nodes now. I don't spend my time mining normally uh, tier 1 ore. And so, uh, I last time I put quartz in here was two weeks ago, and I put 700, and, no, about 800,000. So I have about six weeks of quartz in here, two of which are already gone. So, and I have two quartz super nodes already tagged. So in six more weeks, uh, sorry, four more weeks, I need to put another 750 or 800,000 in here. And by mining it by the hundreds of thousands and the millions, I can sell a whole bunch of tier one ore and can still have hundreds of thousands. I generally don't like to go below 500,000 in any of my reserves for tier one. And then in the process, you can also find, um, you know, Akinthite, uh, how much do I have here? 25, not much. I'm, I'm pretty much out. Yeah, 17 kiloliters here, and I'm out of malachite. I need to, to go and mine. Um, so in the process of scanning for uh, super nodes, you find uh, tier 2 and tier 3 ores. Now, I came at this backwards. In my process of mining for tier 2 and tier 3, I started finding my first super nodes and then changing the way I mined. So my recommendation to new players is to do whatever you can. Sell tier 1 ore that you mine out the ground, even on the Sanctuary Moon, wherever you are. Start selling masses of tier 1 ores here in District 7 or, or District 5 or whatever of Alioth. And then um, buy territory scanners. Buy three of them. Then make yourself just a basic uh, ship. Let's see, do we have any basic? Yeah, this is just a very small basic mining ship here. Very cheap, maybe another 2 million or so. If you take off the warp drive, certainly less than 2 million um, in components here. And then... Uh, Sit your ship in the intersection of three tiles and scan like there and scan all three of them and then start scanning dozens of tiles a day. So your mining operation is starting with scanning. And when you found a super node, hopefully, now again, it, it, it might not happen for you. I certainly hope that it does. But as I said, the more people doing this, the, le the more scarce super nodes are going to be. Uh, but, you know, if you have um, a super node, start mining it, sell, keep some, sell the rest and buy whatever else you need in large quantities. And finally, I would say when you are mining only to feed industry, so when you're not mining uh, to sell, Calculate your daily drain of your sustained uh, production and, you know, mine enough when you have energy here and there to keep it a few days uh, ahead. So, for instance, the only thing I'm constantly producing are my uh, warp cells. Uh, so let's bring that up quickly. So I know that I'm making 232 warp cells in a 24 hour period, which tells me uh, without any talent. So I, I use about 18% less silicon than this. 
um, and basically 18% less across the board here. Uh, this tells me my daily drain of ore that I need to feed in. So I just basically put in a month worth and then don't think about it again for another month. And that for me is, is useful. So, you know, figure out how much you need per day by calculating the, the costs of your sustained production. Figure out um, what the best way for you is, whether you like to track you know four ores at a time i generally only like to track two at a time it gives me less of a headache that way and until you know passive mining is in and better ways of mining are, are around uh, try and uh, experiment and uh, make the the best of it that you can i'm gonna put down in the the description below something um a twitch uh, viewer of mine scipio connet uh, linked um, uh, that he found on Reddit, I believe, uh, a, a Lua script that gives you a 3D uh, graphic of where you've been mining. So if you're trying to mine in an organized manner with lattices, you get a live view of the tunnels you've dug. Um, uh, there are also, uh, bearing in mind uh, the distribution of ore in the game, uh, other planets, even within the safe zone. I know that, say, um, uh, Madis has almost everywhere you look masses of natron and a whole bunch of um pyrite uh, i believe and also thades has a good amount of chromite pretty much most places you look and uh, so you know do experiment with other planets and uh, the ore distributions there are different and better especially out here outside of the safe zone if you can warp to Simeon or Ion or um, you know Locubus was a center of PvP for ages because someone had blockaded the planet or you know you go out to Sinan here you find that you know there are less people competing for those super nodes and so there are more to be found if you have difficulty finding them on Alioth um, uh, if you have a warp drive and a space radar it's perfectly safe to <coughs> slow boat it to those planets and then warp away if uh, a PvP appears on your radar. Um, so I'll talk about that though uh, when we do the build guide for this ship here. The uh, well, uh, because it's Halloween, we did a, a, ja a jack o' lantern. Um, but uh, this is a extra small core, uh, medium hauler, able to lift with my piloting talents about one and a half kilotons. And so um, an, an ideal ship uh, for PvP, except it's missing a space radar which is very embarrassing of me and I don't have any ready. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, please do consider liking it or subscribing here on YouTube or even following me on Twitch. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop over to my Discord. It's linked below. Until the next time, thank you for watching and bye for now.